In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a fun fisherman and boat cake topper to adorn any of your fisherman themed cakes. Okay, to start off, we've got an inspiration picture here, which was a really cute I found online. And we're going to start off by making the boat. So for your project, you just want to make sure that you don't make this too big. You want to find out what size this topper needs to be, and then you want to print out this template for making the boat to match the actual size you want your boat to be, right? So um, just keep that in mind because that is very important. We're going to actually make this to scale from what we print out, okay? So there will be stencil in the tutorial in the pictures um, section of the tutorial, find that template, okay? So print it out to size, and now I've just got a little scrap piece of fondant here. I'm going to wipe down my surface area um, and my hands so I don't have any little fuzzies on them. And I am using gum paste here to make this boat. So I'm rolling out my gum paste, um, not too thin that it will crack on me, so, but not too chunky either. Okay, and we're going to start making the parts of this boat, and then we're going to glue it all together in the end. So I am using my impression mat here, my wood impression mat, and pushing it over my rolled out gum paste. And then I have printed out the template, and I'm going to use a beveled edge of a paintbrush. You could really use anything. A Dresden tool will work. And I'm going to just trace over the um, bottom of the boat, the picture that represents the bottom of the boat. Okay, so I'm going to trace over my gum paste. This is just an easy way to, um, you know, cut out what you need to scale. So then I'm just using my uh, scalpel, that's what it's called, and I'm cutting it out. And by the way, all these tools will be listed in the tool section of the tutorial as well in case you need any of them and want to invest in any of them. And I'm using a little powdered sugar. I've got a board and I'm going to transfer that boat piece over to the board because we are going to need to let um, this whole thing dry. So we're going to build it on a board so we can move the board around while letting it dry. Um, that little extra piece you see there, that rectangular piece, you don't need that piece. Don't worry about that. That was a little extra something. Okay, now I'm rolling out more gum paste, and I'm going to put my impression mat over top of that again. If you're new at rolling out gum paste, just make sure it's not sticking to your surface. Use some powdered sugar or some cornstarch, whichever you'd like to use. And now I'm going to cut out these two pieces of the stencil or template and these are going to be the pieces for the sides of the boat so same thing just using my beveled edge of my paintbrush here um, but anything that does the trick will be fine and then I'm just cutting them out with my scalpel and we can move on from there now this was interesting I couldn't find the piece for the back of the boat like I, I don't see it anywhere on the stencil so I kind of had to make it myself which was weird, but I just went with it because I figured it can't be that hard. So I just used this. Um, I used kind of, I know that that was supposed to be the back of the boat, but clearly it's not tall enough, right? So I just kind of had to finagle a little bit. So this is what I ended up doing. Um, I'm tracing again. So I know that this is the width of the boat, so I'm going to use basically this piece in the middle here. I'm going to start with this and then cut it down to what it needs to be. So I just traced over those two, the top and the bottom of that piece. And now I'm going to line the bottom of that piece up with the bottom of this bottom boat section. And I'm going to kind of trace over the edges so I know how wide it needs to be. And then I just cut those out. I start with that. I end up having to cut those straight. You see that they're at an angle there. But that's okay because we can just piece these um, parts together first and then cut as we need. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of hold them up just to make sure everything is as it should be. And then I'm going to use a melted chocolate to start gluing things together. And I'm going to use cotton balls to help hold things up as I'm gluing together. And if you have Chef Rubber's Magic Freeze Spray, that would be very helpful as well. You don't need to have it, but it's a spray that you can spray over top of the melted chocolate that will freeze things in place for you and, and help them to 
you know, dry a little bit more quickly. So I've got some melted chocolate in a squeeze bottle here, but you can put it in a bag, a tipless bag, cut the tip. Sometimes that's actually easier. And I'm just going to use that as my glue. I'm going to start with the bottom edge of the back piece. You don't want to put too much on because then it will kind of goop over the edge and you'll have to scrape it off, which you'll have to do that anyway. But too much would just, you know, be a pain. So just one little bead of it along the bottom edge. There I am using that same beveled edge to kind of scrape it off. And then I'm just going to add it to the bottom edge of one side and on um, the edge of the back there. And you can see I actually straightened out the sides of that back piece. I cut them so that they weren't at an angle anymore. And then I added that piece. Um, make sure you've got the front of the boat in the front. Those kind of angled cuts of those side pieces should be both in the front, um, you know, com coming together. And then I will just do the same thing for the other side. Use my melted glue and glue that on as well. Scrape off the excess so it doesn't look messy and then trim off those back um, pieces on the edge that are hanging over and and then you can use the template and you can trace over more gum paste um, and create the oars and just cut out those little pieces for them and then you can roll out a kind of like a snake of gum paste with your hands and then use your fondant roller to get it nice and even and smooth and just cut the little handles for the oars. And then once you've done that you can kind of position them on top of the oars. And then I decided to cut out a little rectangular section in each oar so that I could use a little bit of water and then just kind of slide the handles in between, squeeze them together a little bit and uh, that worked for me. Okay, I'm using Saraceno modeling paste and some of their uh, modeling chocolate. It was just kind of chocolate with, mm, you know, what did they say here? <laughs> um, their modeling chocolate, I call it. Uh, I've used both for this project, but if you're in hot weather, I would stick with their modeling paste. It's really great stuff. I really, really like it a lot. Okay, I'm working first on making the... Um, fisherman's flesh so his head his arms and his neck um, so I used a little bit of peach gel color there and then I'm just going to create a round ball for its head so we're using this picture as our guide because we want to keep him this size we don't want to make him too big so we're constantly referring back to our picture that is printed out to size so I'm using my fingers and pushing them in to create the sockets for the eyes and then after I've done that, I uh, squeeze the side of the head a little bit because his head is a little bit thinner on top. And then I'm using this little tool, so really you could use a paintbrush handle, um, and creating a divot underneath the nose so that I can start forming the nose here. Now, you know, there's many different ways you can do this, but this is just how my brain told me it wanted to do it, so I went with it and it worked. And then I use that same tool to kind of create the bridge of the nose, which you can really just do with your fingers if you want. And I'm really smoothing all of this out as I go, trying to keep this as smooth as possible. Blending in the seams, um, which you'll see, there will be seams that I'll have to blend in because I'm going to add little pieces to this as I go. Okay, so I just use that little tool to um, help me form the nose there so I can get some definition for the nose. But we're going to be adding little pieces now. Like I mentioned, for the nose, if you look at the inspiration picture, his nose is definitely a little bit bigger on the big side. He's a cartoon guy, so I needed a little bit more there. And then I needed a little bit more for the chin as well. So I just created those shapes and popped them on. If you need to use a little bit of water, then do that. But I didn't because it was... A little bit warmer in my work area and I'm just kind of blending in the seams now with my fingers and trying to keep the shape of his head I'm like, when creating a face or any anything really any human you want to keep the shapes if you're using an inspiration picture you want to keep the proportions and the shapes as best as close to the inspiration picture as possible because that's where you know the coolness of your piece comes in. It looks cool or it looks funny or it looks cute because of the proportions 
and the little details, how big the eyes are, how big the nose are, nose is, how big the chin is, all of that makes a big difference. So especially when working on the face, you want to focus on that. I've got my little size zero color shaper tool there I just showed you and was using the, the pointy and I'm just using that to help me blend in the seams, the nose on the bridge of the nose and the size of the nose. Okay, now same um, set of color shapers it has this shape in it. I'm not even going to attempt to give it a name. <laughs> and I just pushed that into the eye area to create um, a little spot for my eyeballs to go on. And then just using my pointy shaper again just to smooth things out and get everything just right. Okay, so now I've got a skewer and I'm actually flipping it over so that I don't have the pointy side because sometimes if it's if it's too soft, the pointy side will poke right through the head and we don't want that. We just want it to go up about halfway. And I'm just going to let him sit there for a minute while I work on his eyeballs. Um, okay, so I have got... You could really use anything. You could use gum paste for this. You could use fondant for this, um, or the modeling paste. But um, I roll into a ball and, to, and then to a sausage shape, and then cut it in half so that I get two pieces that are the same size. And you might use some trial and error for the eyes. They might be too big at first, so you have to do that again using less. But that is a general idea of getting the eyeballs. And he's supposed to look shocked in this, so. Um, the eyeball sticking out of those sockets a little bit is actually perfect for this look. So I left them. I didn't make them any smaller. They didn't need to be any smaller. Okay, now I'm adding some blue into some of the modeling paste. And going to start creating his body with that. Again, you might have to do a little trial and error to get the size right, the amount. But I really actually got it right in the first shot. It's not a big deal if it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, but you want you know the general size of your picture. I rolled it into a ball in my hands first and rubbed out the cracks, and then I placed it on my surface and kind of pushed down on the sides to create a flat surface. So this will be his bottom, and we'll turn it upside down so that we have a flat surface to attach um, his shirt to. Okay, so you can see it's kind of like a half sphere shape here and then I'm just kind of pinching around the top edge in order to create the waistline and I'm putting it on a block which is kind of like my little seat in the boat which is just a block of modeling paste just to elevate him a little bit and now I'm going to create his legs which are really simple and I'm not even going to create feet because you're not going to see them in the boat but so you saw I just um, created a sausage shape cut it in half so I have two that are the same size and if you need to cut those down you can do that evenly and then I'm using my pinky and rolling it along the back behind the knee bending it doing the same with the other side just rolling it gently back and forth and that kind of creates the upper thigh and the lower calf which is kind of cool then I bend it and I'm hold it and I'm kind of pushing underneath the knee a little bit there just to create the look of the knee right and that is enough really for the legs of my fisherman here but to attach them I need to cut off some of the thigh at an angle so that I can so it will sit well against his pants and then I'll be blending in the back seam there so that it you know it looks like it's one piece of clothing with his legs poking through the pant holes Okay, so the seam is blended in the back there now. I'm not worried about the seams in the front because we, we actually want them to look like he is, you know, his legs, to, want to look the way his legs should. Okay, now moving on, I've got some white modeling paste and you can see how I am using my hands to just kind of create this shape with it um, so that it looks like he's sitting down and um, you've got a back and you've got a belly and the top part will lead into his neck and so I'm pushing down that top part to just create a little bit of a divot for his neck to go in now this is not um, so it was a little I shouldn't have made that cut actually but I just you don't want it hanging over his pants because in the picture it that's not happening so I wanted to make sure it wasn't too wide to fit on top of the pants but I didn't really need to do that I don't think and I end up adding more pieces to this which worked really well and blend blended in really well also by the way um, so yes here I'm adding a little bit more because he wasn't quite um, there wasn't enough girth on him I felt like he's a little bit too skinny 
<laughs> for to look like the picture. So now I'm using my plastic palette knife to blend in the seams. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers to smooth it out. We are going to create some folds in this with a tool to make it look like, you know, we don't want it to be too smooth, too perfect because we a t-shirt on this guy is not completely perfect. But I am going to use my palette knife to just get the seams out first as we go here. And once I'm done getting that all smoothed out and I feel like I have enough girth and his belly there, um, I'm going to start on his shirt sleeves. So I'm going to get some more modeling paste. I'm going to roll it into the sausage, same thing I keep doing. And then I'm going to cut off two pieces that are the same, like so. Um, and I'm using my color shaper and I'm kind of poking it into the piece to create the opening for the arm to come out of the shirt sleeve. Now one thing I want to mention is later on when I make the arms I end up remaking these shirt sleeves because it's really actually much more helpful to make them while you're making the arms so that you know you can create them to fit together well. Okay so just keep that in mind. I actually had to redo those if you want to wait to do them until you start making the arms. That is probably a good idea. Okay, now I'm using my tool, my color shaper again here with the pointy edge. You could really use anything in Dresden tool just to create some folds in his white shirt. It was simple, it was quick, it was easy. And now I'm using my a straight edge plastic palette knife to just create the uh, kind of elastic around the bottom of the pants. You know, I'm just trying to get the look of the inspiration photo and um, I'm making these little lines around the top of it just to give it a little bit of detail. Make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, neck time. Now his neck is pretty thick. <laughs> so um, starting off with a thick neck and then cut it down a little bit. We want it to get it the right size. We don't want it to be too tall or too short. And I'll place it right on top. And then I'm going to use my shears here to cut my wooden skewer. Now we want the wooden skewer to, you know, poke down far enough into the shirt and his pants so that it definitely holds his head on well. And I'm using my needle nose pliers there to just kind of push it down to where it should be. And then we're going to make some wrinkles in his neck by just using, just using the back of my scalpel here to create the lines that I see in the inspiration picture. And that's what we've got so far. And now we're going to move on to make his overalls, which are really quick and easy. Just roll out some more of the blue and cut little strips, add a little bit of water, and add them like so. You want to, if they're a little bit chunky, you want to blend them into the pants a little bit better than you. I have done there. I do that later on. Okay, for his beard, I just rolled out a thin white, white piece of the modeling paste and just kind of added it over top of his chin. It was pretty easy. Um, a little bit extra on the sides there and blend them in. And then used my size zero color shaper tool, pointy one here to kind of blend the seams in, bring up the top edge to underneath his nose. I was trying to keep this as simple as possible, but still look good. And then that point, just the pointy edge just to, you know, make divots in his beard to look, make it look a little bit more like a beard. And then also I just kind of redefined the frown on the sides of his beard. Okay, time for the ears. I just rolled out a little piece of the flesh color and um, using my little tool there, just kind of poked into it a little bit to create the illusion of ears. A little bit of water on the side. I cut that little circle in half, by the way, to get each ear. And then just make sure they're on there well. Push them on a little bit better so they don't fall off when we add the hair and such. Okay, so this is the idea of the hair. I just rolled out little flat um, 
pieces and then kind of tapered them at the bottom so that I could make them look a little bit curly at the bottom, flip them up a little bit. And I really, I did not spend a lot of time on the hair. I'm putting a hat on top, remember, so I don't have to worry about the top of the head too much, though the hat is not a super huge hat. So um, do keep that in mind. But I'm trying to keep it as close as possible to the picture without spending too much time being fussy about it. But it's really the same idea each time, just adding these little flat pieces that I kind of make into wavy hair with my fingers. I let the bottom kind of curl up a little bit. Um, and it's tapered at the bottom as well. And I just layer pieces over top just to fill in the entire area and then you can use your Dresden tool after that to create lines in it to blend the pieces together you know you can take a lot more time on the hair if you want to make it look better but you know we've got a an old farmer here fishing <laughs> so there I'm using my my clay shaper to just kind of create little score little lines into it so it looks a little bit more like hair but not spending a ton of time on the details here though I do end up adding a few more pieces because I do kind I do like that little kind of wavy look and in inspiration picture of the extra hair by the ears so I did spend a little time and added a little bit more there you know you could take it further could do whatever you want with it but this was good enough for me okay now moving on to the hat so I'm really just rolling out um, a ball shape and making I want the bottom to be flat so I'm using my thumb here um, well not flat actually I'm pushing my thumb up into the bottom of it to kind of make it a little bit wider you definitely want it to be you don't want it to be too small but you don't want it to be too big right so I used my thumb but then I used my ball tool here to make it even wider and then I can kind of push in the rim around the bottom so it's kind of puffy on top so there I'm pushing in the rim it's kind of puffy on top but it comes it tapers a little bit at the bottom and while still covering you know the amount of head it needs to cover so that worked for me. It wasn't very hard to do. Um, and then I'm rolling out a rim. We don't want it too thin that it's just going to flop everywhere, but we are going to use a cotton ball to kind of keep it in place while it dries. At first I had it a little bit too long. You can see what I did there. I'm just kind of holding it up and cutting off pieces. And then um, I'm using the modeling paste again, the Saracena modeling paste. This one was, uh, at this point I've got it, it's a little bit too thin. It needs to be a little wider, especially where it meets the hat. So I'm just kind of stretching it with my fingers a little bit to get it wider and pushing it to meet the hat. But I don't want to mess up the brim too much. You want to try and keep it, you know, nice and straight. So I'm just finagling a little bit till I get it where I want it. This ended up being a little bit long for me. I actually did end up cutting it down just a little bit more from this. It was too, too long. Um, that, and then I used a cotton ball and just kind of stuck it between the rim and his nose to help that dry. And it did dry and it stayed in place and it was great. Okay, so now I am making his arms. So I am rolling out a piece of um, the flesh color and um, I'm, it's hard <laughs> it's hard to describe I should just let you watch um, I'm creating like a paddle at the end here but I also want the palm of the hand so you can see that I've kind of flattened where the fingers are but I've left it puffy on the palm and then I rolled with my pinky underneath the palm to get the wrist a little thinner. Go back and watch it again if you need to see me do it again. I'm actually going to do it again um, with the other hand. So um, I'm just going to let you watch how I do it instead of explain it to you because I don't want to overload your mind here. It's, this is probably easier to just see it done than hear it described.
arms and hands take a little practice, but he is a cartoon, so they don't have to be perfect either, which is the beauty of this. Um, and now I'm using more cotton balls to kind of hold it in place where I want it to be. And you can see um, I it would, didn't quite fit my shoulder well there, so I made a new shoulder. I just took it off and just created another one that fit better to the arm. Um, and I did that on the other side as well. And I just, you know, kind of while the arm was not attached, just kind of fit it and then attach them together. I um, actually didn't put it on them yet, but I will. Um, and I've got these little, I bought these years and years ago. They're from Duff Goldman. They're these little wires that are shaped this way. <laughs> and it worked perfectly for my fisherman. You could just create that shape with a regular floral wire if you want to do that. But these were just convenient to have. I just cut it off. And I'm using this as a fishing pole. Very simple, very basic, but effective for the fishing pole. I'm going to cut that down, but don't cut it down too much. Um, you don't want it to go through the bottom of the boat, but you do want it to go down through his leg so that it can anchor there through his leg. So don't cut it too short. Now I'm attaching together the other arm and new sleeve, and then popping in my fishing pole there through his leg on the bottom definitely wanted to anchor into the modeling paste of his leg and then I'm using a little water and attaching his arm kind of to his body holding the fishing pole and now I've just got some this is waxed uh, what the heck is it thread <laughs> couldn't think of it wax thread basically is what I'm using as a fishing line and just kind of you know, wrapping it around the pole and placing it where it needs to be in his right hand. And then I'll finish, I'll just leave a lot of extra um, so that when I attach it to the cake, I can, I can position it where I want it. Okay, and I'm using this Baker Pan edible marker to color in the black pupils of his eyes, which worked out well um, and gave him that kind of like, what is happening look. Okay, chartreuse and black petal dust and titanium dioxide. Um, this is the white gel from Artisan Accent. It's mostly titanium dioxide and a little glycerin. And then some cornstarch. Okay, so I'm what I'm doing is I'm coloring the boat now. So I've mixed the cornstarch and titanium dioxide and a little bit of vodka as well. I'm gonna be using that in a minute, but first I'm taking black petal dust all over the boat. I'm not trying to get a solid coat I'm just kind of brushing it on and and letting it be blotchy. And then I'm doing the same thing with the chartreuse, which is like, you know, it's like a deep green. Um, I just wanted a couple of different tones in there. And then after that, I'm brushing on that mix of the cornstarch and the white. Um, I was trying to do that crackle effect, but it didn't quite work because I didn't quite have the right ingredients for it so I just brushed it on and then I took a little paper towel and wiped it off and that gave me kind of a good whitewashed grayish sort of fishing boat finish that really worked for me I liked how it came out I did the same thing on the oars as well and my fisherman was done was finished I add him to the alligator cake that tutorial is on cake heads for cake heads members and also how to work with gelatin in your case you can see I've got gelatin around the bottom of the alligator um, I show how I made that I show two different versions of jelly or jello for cakes with two different recipes um, one is in a, another cake that I made which is, is an island cake and that uses a different recipe you need different amount different amount of gelatins um, for each of those recipes so if you want to check those out those are on cake heads for members only as well and there are a whole bunch of other tutorials on the site hundreds of other tutorials as well as the awesome group of members that are there to help support answer questions just help you really learn the art of cake decorating if you ever want to come join our cake heads family we would be honored to have you with us i hope you enjoyed this tutorial see you later